I created two of these bags for my wife and I to keep in the trunks of our cars. I watched quite a number of videos to get ideas from other people about what should or should not be in the bags. The bags were designed to contain everything we might need to get home in an urban environment over a distance of up to 35 miles. And my initial intent was to make the bag as light as possible. I think we've achieved this with a bag that weighs under 10 pounds. So let's take a look. Right off the top, this is a single shoulder carry bag, but I've added a waist strap to it to keep it from flopping around and it makes it quite comfortable. I also have the ability to switch shoulders on it. It can be uh, reconfigured in just four or five seconds. Go from left shoulder to right shoulder so that as my shoulder gets tired of carrying it, I can switch to the other one and get some relief. So it works either way like that. It's very easy to put on and take off because it is a single shoulder bag. You can just sort of throw it over your shoulder and then use that extra strap to strap it to your waist so that it's reasonably secure and isn't trying to fall off your shoulder. The bag has several pockets and pouches on it. Um, and so I want to talk about what's on the exterior of the bag first. Uh, first off, I have a 24 ounce uh, metal uh, water container. Uh, this is minimal water, especially for around here, but I expect that um, because I'm in an urban environment, uh, water will be uh, available. I'll be able to find water in a pool or in a tap or something like that along the way, so I should be able to replenish unless things have really gone far wrong. I also have on the exterior a uh, survival whistle. This is one of the loudest whistles that's available, and this particular whistle um, um, uh, will be very good for signaling, and it's outside and accessible. Also on the outside, I have a small pouch where I have things that I might need to access immediately. There's a tiny Leatherman uh, tool, uh, there's a Bic lighter, uh, there's a button compass, and uh, there's a, a, a good uh, Phoenix flashlight uh, with a lanyard. So uh, the things that I'm likely to need in, a, in short order on the out, are on the outside of the pack. Inside the pack, we have a spare set of uh, wool socks, which give you a change of socks for walking. A pair of gloves so you can protect your hands when you have to manipulate or move through things that could cause cuts, scratches, and then later on infections. A shemag, which is useful for a million different things. And then a uh, very good frog tog poncho, which also can be used as a field expedient shelter. So it could be held up with some cordage. Okay, let's look next at uh, tools and equipment. So we have some uh, cordage, it's about 50 feet of paracord here, 550 paracord. A very interesting little survival knife, which is very inexpensive. Uh, but came with a sheath, uh, has some paracord wrapped around the, tangle, the handle, it's a full tang, uh, has a little bit of saw in the back of it, pretty good tanto knife, and it has a fire steel. Uh, also there's a small roll of duct tape, some battery replacements for my ele electronic equipment and my flashlight, carabiner so that I can attach something to the outside of my pack uh, conveniently and easily. There's large size freezer bags that I can use to carry water if necessary or other items. Then there's a $120 in cash, plus about $10 in quarters in case we find a working vending machine or something like that. And a uh, very small Leatherman, very compact, has some nice tools in it. And then uh, two sizes of tie wraps, including the um, high quality ones with the metal tang in them. And that can be used for field repairs or to attach something to the pack or they have a million uses so they can be really helpful. Okay, that brings us to personal protection stuff. First we have two particulate masks in case I'm traveling with someone else we can both have masks in case I'm required for smoke or dust. Since we live in the uh, desert we have some sun protection for uh, skin and lips. I have some personal protection in non-lethal and uh, high-end pepper spray. Also I wanted to remind people that if you have a spare set of your prescription glasses, these are cheaters which are fine for me. And then a little bag of aspirin here just to remind me to tell you about uh, bringing your own medications if you have something you need daily. Uh, bring two or three days or, or more of your medications with you so you have them and you don't uh, become desperate over something that's medically necessary. In first aid we have a bandage, a small one, and then a first aid kit which contains some night travel gloves, a number of bandages, different kinds of medications, and mostly some moleskin and blister protection because if you are walking a great deal of distance and you wind up with something that's, that comes up on your feet, you have to take care of your feet. We have an Israeli bandage in case of some kind of major trauma. For lighting, we have a couple of snap lights, which are good long-term, you know, multi-hour solutions to give some lights so you can navigate or see. Headlamp so that you can operate in the dark uh, hands-free. Small flashlight and a uh, spare battery for the small flashlight. And both the flashlight and the spare are lithium batteries because they're considerably lighter than alkalines and they last longer. And they also have a much longer shelf life. So you know, I'm less likely to have a situation where I pull the flashlight out and it's dead and I have no way of getting it going. Moving on, we have some hygiene items, flattened uh, part roll of toilet paper, some uh, hand sanitizer, 
some button towels. These you can take a cap of water from your water bottle, drop this in, and it makes a wet towel that you can use. There's some soap flakes, uh, some wet naps, and some uh, wet ones uh, for keeping clean. And then there's also a very small camping or hiking towel because you're forever getting wet or may have to wash your hands and this is a way of making whatever that is dry again. You can hang it on your pack to dry it out so you can reuse it again later. Next we have some fire and nutrition items. There's three sources of fire here. First is a uh, very inexpensive Fresnel lens. It's very lightweight and uh, boy down here in the southwest does this do a job of lighting a fire. You can have a fire running in seconds just using the sun and we have sun most days. Have a thick lighter and a fire steel which is a second fire seal beside the one that we had in the knife, plus a little bit of cotton and Vaseline for fire starter and some Esbit fuel tabs, which could be used for making long-term fire without having to gather anything or basically enough fire to boil water or something like that. We have some uh, teriyaki, which is good for hydration or salt, which you lose fast when you're sweating in the desert, some granola bars, some coffee packs and some sugar toe in the coffee, and also some hydration tablets to make flavored water. So. You can drink something other than just water may cut the flavor of something that uh, maybe doesn't taste so good. Uh, water purification tablets uh, in case we need them and then very important we have a Silcock key. The Silcock key is used in, the, in an urban environment. Uh, almost every building has some kind of a faucet on the back of the building somewhere. Sometimes they're covered with a metal shield and all you can see is some holes in the metal but uh, inside there is a faucet that has no handle and the Silcock key is the tool that's used to turn that water on and off so, so we can obtain water. We have a metal 24 ounce water container, 24 ounces gives me something for survival. It's not too heavy and because it's metal I can use it to heat water so I can boil new water and uh, make it safe to drink uh, using that container. And it fits the pack and doesn't add too much weight. For navigation and communications I have laminated city street map, a uh, state map and a basic navigation guide so that I don't have to rely on just what I can remember from uh, Boy Scouts. I have a write in the rain pad and pen so that I can uh, make notes or leave notes. I have a reasonably good orienteering compass uh, with a magnifier which is another fire source and for navigation and a small button compass that goes on the outside of the pack so I have something uh, ready uh, to use. I also have a Celestron monocular so that I can see down the road and can see what's up ahead. I can spot danger or opportunity. Pretty lightweight. Normally I wouldn't keep it in the um, pack but I do want to protect the optics so it doesn't get scratched up or damaged in all the vibration from the car so it's inside that. But almost nothing else I have is inside its packaging because that's just unnecessary extra weight. I also have an FRS and GMRS radio which has higher power and can reach a little bit farther. And GMRS requires that you have a license but a group license will cover all of your radios for your group and it's not very expensive. You can easily get it online. Also have a small signal mirror and a very, very loud uh, survival whistle so that I can uh, signal to someone else at a, at a level beyond what you could do with just with your voice. All of this is carried in a Unigear uh, crossbody sling pack. It's a one shoulder pack. Seems to be pretty well made, has a little bit of webbing in here so it's not too hot. The only thing I've added to it is an extra uh, strap that holds it down across your waist so it's a little bit more comfortable to carry long term. Has a small pouch on the, um, on the strap so you can get uh, access things in my case, a knife, a flashlight, a compass and the things that you might need. Has a, a bag here, you can put a water bottle, in this case my uh, steel water bottle goes in it. Um, ha has a carry handle on it. It's also set up so you can put a hydration pack in it although I don't use it that way and then has uh, a pack on the back uh, where you can put in flat things and then um, uh, two excellent or three excellent pouches that give uh, lots of capacity and I'm able to fit everything in. It's in a pretty sturdily built, seems like a pretty good well-made bag and rounds out my entire kit to a little over 9.4 pounds and that meets my design goals trying to get a pack under 10 pounds that had everything in it. Now almost everything that's in here is things that I ordered from Amazon and it comes from a lot of research that I did with from other people that have done similar videos and I want to thank them for their expertise and for their ideas and suggestions which have culminated in, in what I think currently is the best pack that I can build within my requirements. It is a little pricey when we put all this together and a lot of people may substitute items that are less expensive to procure. I think for each of the packs my wife and I have in our cars we're out of pocket something around $300. But of course that includes about $130 in cash that's in the pack. So if you're not carrying that cash or the cash is uh, counted separately from the equipment, it's considerably less than that. We also keep in the trunks of our cars walking shoes, hats, jackets, and items for personal protection. 
I hope you find this video useful, and I've included a complete list of all the items in the bag in the comments below, so you can use this as the basis of your own get home bag. If you're watching this, you probably have some great ideas about a get home bag too. So let me know what you think. What have I missed? What could I do to make it better? What have you got in your bag that I've overlooked? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to like the video, it really helps me out.